Hello guys, welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be checking out this awesome viewer suggested integral. It was suggested in the comment from another video. I'll put the commenter up here. Um, and this is quite a beautiful integral. It takes us through differentiation under the integral sign, Feynman integration, power series, and all sorts of cool things. So let's jump right into the integral. Now before we start, we need to cover a few things about the special functions that we're using. Now, uh, hopefully you, you all know that sine h of x is called hyperbolic sine of x, and this is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Sine h inverse of x is just the inverse function of this function, and that is equal to ln x plus square root x squared plus 1. And uh, it's also important to know that the derivative of inverse sine hx is 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. Uh, cosh of x is very similar. It's just got that negative sign flipped. So plus e to the negative x all over 2. And cosh inverse of x is, of course, again, the inverse function. And it's almost the same, just with this quick change right there. And similarly, the derivative of inverse cosh of x is 1 over square root x squared minus 1. Now, the other thing that we're going to need before we start our video is some quick um, limits and formulas that we're going to be using in the video. So very quickly, um, we want to show that limit as x goes to infinity of inverse cosh of x minus inverse sine of x, inverse hyperbolic sine of x equals 0. And this is pretty easy to show because we just can combine these two natural logarithms and we'll end up with ln x plus square root x squared minus 1 over x plus square root x squared plus 1. And if we take the limit on the inside here, we can actually just divide by x on the top and bottom. And what we'll end up with is just um, pen uh, is just 1 plus 1 plus square root 1 minus 1 over x squared, or plus 1 over x squared, or no, this one's the minus, sorry, that is minus, minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And of course, these are just going to go to 0, and so we're just going to end up with ln 1, which is 0. So that's done. The other one we want to do is the limit as x goes to infinity of sine h inverse of ax minus sine h inverse of bx. And again, we're just going to plug this into those natural log formulas. And we're going to subtract. So we're going to end up dividing ax plus square root a squared x squared plus 1 over bx plus square root b squared x squared plus 1. And if we just take out ln a plus b, we'll end up with limit as x goes to infinity of ln a plus b, a over b, plus ln. And then again, doing the dividing by x trick, we'll end up with 1 plus square root 1 plus 1 over a squared x squared. It doesn't really matter uh, that you can't see this very well, because again, we're just going to end up with over 1, right? That's going to go to 0. And it's just going to end up being ln a over b. So that's all we need, and just let's go ahead and jump right into our integral. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the quite obvious substitution u equals cosh of x. That means that x equals inverse cosh of u, and that means dx equals 1 over square root u squared minus 1 du. And when, u, when uh, x is 0, u is going to be 1, and when x is infinity, x is, uh, u is going to be infinity. So we're going to end up with cosh inverse of u minus inverse sine h of u over square root u squared minus 1 du. Now, in order to get rid of this pesky u squared minus 1, we're going to make the substitution v equals square root u squared minus 1. And you'll see the magic that happens here. That means that v squared plus 1, take the square root, is going to be equal to u. And that means that v dv over square root v squared plus 1 equals du. 
So if we go ahead and put this into our integral, we're going to end up with the integral from 1 to infinity, or not 1, because now when u is 1, v is equal to 0. Okay, yes. Um, so we're going to be at 0 at the bottom there. Then we have this square root u squared plus 1 on the bottom, but that's just equal to v. And so we're going to end up with the v over v, square root v squared plus 1 from the dv, right? And so this is going to cancel with this, and this is going to be our integral. All right? And in case you haven't noticed here, I've left a space here and here for a very specific reason. And since we have this square root v squared plus 1, this is the perfect place to use Feynman integration, which is uh, better known as, which is also known as differentiating under the integral sign, but of course we always call it Feynman integration. So I'm going to call this i of, ooh, what should we choose? Let's choose gamma, because that's cool, is going to equal, we're going to put gamma there, gamma here. Now, as you can see, we'll call this original integral i, right? So i equals i of 1. Using our lemma that we proved earlier, if we let gamma go to infinity, we can see that the top is going to be 0 everywhere on the entire domain because um, the input for sine h and cosh will be infinity, right? So that's going to be 0 everywhere, and so that means that our integral will go to 0. So we're going to have... Um, so i of infinity is 0. All right, now all that we have to do is differentiate. So immediately we can see when we differentiate because of the chain rule, this square root v squared plus 1 on the bottom is going to disappear. And then we just have to use the derivative for cosh and sine h. So we're going to end up with 1 over square root gamma squared v squared plus gamma squared all minus 1 minus 1 over square root gamma squared v squared plus gamma squared plus 1 dv. All right. And now the way that we're going to integrate this is we're going to take out that 1 over gamma. We're going to take this out here um, and take it out of all those square roots. So we're just going to, all right. So we're just going to end up with that. And then um, it's going to be a little bit tricky what I'm doing here, but it just comes from a pretty uh, well-known integral formula for inverse sine, inverse hyperbolic sine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to end up with 1 over gamma, and then we're going to take out integral from 0 to infinity. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take out a square root 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And then this square root is going to now be v over uh, this bit, right? I'll just put it like that plus 1, minus similar thing right here. We're going to have 1 plus 1 over gamma squared. Sorry that it's all jammed in there and you can't see, but it'll become more simplified after. Then we're going to end up with square root v over square root, all that, squared plus 1. And as, you, as I said before, the square root, um, the integral of 1 over square root v squared plus 1 dv is just going to be um, inverse sine h of v. So because of, uh, we have this v on the bottom, we have the square root on the bottom of the v. Uh, because of the chain rule, this is going to be taken away. And so we're just going to end up with i prime of alpha equals 1 over alpha times inverse hyperbolic sine of v over square root 1 minus 1 over gamma squared minus inverse hyperbolic sine of v over square root 1 plus 1 over gamma squared, evaluated at infinity and at 0. All right. All right. So we can immediately see that when we plug in 0, uh, both of these hyperbolic signs on the inside, we're going to have 0. And so that's just going to disappear because hyper inverse hyperbolic sine of 0 is just 0. Another thing I want to note here is that what we're searching for is i of 1, right? And as you can see, at i of 1, this is very loosely defined because we're going to have inverse sine h, and we're going to have this um, on the bottom. We're going to have 1 over 1 squared. So clearly, that's not um, the best situation. But since we only have this discontinuity at the endpoint of, of what we're searching for, because um, i 
if we look at our original definition, I of gamma is going to be defined for gamma is greater than or equal to 1. Since it's only at the end point, it's not going to be a big problem. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this. Now for the infinity, we can use the lemma that we have before from the beginning, and this is just going to be 1 over gamma times ln of a over b. And in this case, this is a and this is b, except really it's um, this is 1 over a and this is 1 over b. So we're just going to, so this one's going to end up being on the top and this one's going to end up being on the bottom. So we're going to have all square root 1 plus 1 over gamma squared over 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And this equals i prime of a. Of, of gamma, sorry. I, I always use a, but this time I decided to use gamma. All right, I'm going to bring this out as a power because of the rules of the natural logarithm. So we'll just end up with a 2 there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides from 1 to infinity. And the reason we're doing this is because, as you can see, I'm going to flip the sides here, but um, for this one we're going to end up with i of infinity minus i of 1. And interestingly, i of infinity is nothing more than 0, right? We proved that earlier. And so we're just going to end up with negative i of 1, which is just i, right? All right, now we have to work on integrating this other part, and that's going to be a little bit more difficult. So we'll split it up into two integrals, okay? And now that we have these two different integrals, it's pretty clear that we are going to want to use the power series for ln 1 plus x. So let's go ahead and uh, just derive those super quick. 1 over 1 minus x equals the sum. Now this, this sum is always going to be from n equals 0 to infinity, but I'll just be using this little sum notation because... Um, I don't want to write out the bounds every single time. So we're going to end up with the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. So integrating both sides, we arrive at negative ln 1 minus x equals the sum of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Or, uh, actually, no, we'll just leave it like that. Similarly, if we have uh, 1 over 1 plus x, we're going to end up with a sum of negative 1 to the n, x to the n. And that means that ln 1 plus x equals negative 1, or sum negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Uh, let me point out really quickly that when we integrate, we always have to have that plus c. But as you can see, if you plug in 0 uh, into both those ln terms, you'll get, find that both sides are equal without adding the plus c. All right, so now that we have these two power series, let's apply them. For this first one, uh, the integral on the left, we're going to be able to apply the 1 for 1 plus x. And this is valid because on our domain, gamma is always between 1 and infinity. So 1 over gamma is always between 0 and 1, which is perfectly good because that's what we need for this power series to be true. So we're going to apply this. And then this negative sign right here is going to disappear because we have this negative ln 1 minus x. So we're just going to absorb that. So we're going to end up with plus 1 half the second integral. Now let's go ahead and take this 1 over gamma on the outside and we'll move it to the inside. So we'll take this out from out here and we'll put this on the inside. And so this is going to become a 3. This is going to become a 3 gamma, right? And then we'll go ahead and exchange the sum and the integral. And if we go ahead and solve this integral super quick, we're going to end up with uh, gamma to the negative 2n minus 2 over negative 2n minus 2, evaluated at infinity and at 0. Of course, at infinity, it's just going to disappear. And at 0, it's just going to be, uh, or not at 0, at 1, I'm sorry. Uh, this should be at 1 because we're integrating from 1 to infinity. And at 1, this is just going to go to 1. And since this negative is going to cancel with the, with the fact that we're subtracting it, so just going to be 1 over 2n plus 2 equals 1 over 2n plus 1. So this sum negative i is going to become 1 half. Actually, we'll make it 1 fourth because we have this 1 half from uh, the 2n plus 2. 1 fourth times the sum from negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 squared plus 1 fourth times the sum of 1 over n plus 1 squared. That's a little bit sloppy, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. For this one on the right, this is a famous Riemann zeta of 2, 
and that's just going to evaluate to pi squared over 6. For this other one, let's notice that if we are to take, um, if we are to divide the other sum by 4, we'll end up with the sum of 1 over 2n plus 2 squared, right? Just observing that 4, four inside. So 1 fourth times pi squared over 6 is this sum, right? And if we take the original sum, pi squared over 6, which is the uh, sum of 1 over n plus 1 squared, and we subtract this other sum, we'll end up with only the sum of the odd numbers, right? Because this is only summing up the even numbers, and this is summing up all the numbers. So we'll end up with the, the alls minus the evens, which is just the odd numbers. And if we subtract two of them, we'll end up with the odd numbers minus the even numbers, which if you look at this sum right here, that's actually what that is. So that's really the odds minus the evens. If you plug in per term by term, you'll end up with one over one, minus one over four, plus one over nine, and so on and so forth. So really, this is this sum minus two times this sum. And so this is two times one fourth times pi squared over six. And with some simplification, this ends up being pi squared over 12. So negative i equals 1 fourth pi squared over 6 plus pi squared over 12. Simplifying, we'll end up with i equals negative 1 fourth times 3 pi squared over 12. And simplifying once more, we end up with i equal to negative pi squared over 16. Wow, that is just magical. I really love doing this integral. I love how it uh, brings us through everything, through hyperbolic trig functions, through differentiating under the integral sign to using power series, finally even to the Riemann zeta and Dirichlet eta functions. So uh, thank you so much for this integral. Um, I hope you guys can provide me with more fun integrals because this one was just a lot of fun to play around with. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.